Welcome to the Ask Ezra Intimacy Coaching Podcast, a peek behind the curtain of some of the most intimate conversations that people have with Ezra as an intimacy coach. Join us for a session already in progress. And I actually, I had to go digging through my books because what you wanted to talk about, I was like, oh shit, I need to do some research. So I found one of the books from the course, (laughs) right? Wired for Love. Here we go. This is the book Mm. that is going to provide some additional resources um, for like attachment style stuff, right? We talked about that a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've been delving more into more because I had a um, misdiagnosis a little bit of myself. Um, So it's been interesting digging in and yeah, seeing where all my stuff traces back to sure so so what you're saying is that you sort of saw the attachment style info and didn't um you sort of saw yourself as a different attachment style is that accurate yeah um I had a lot of confusion when we first um were talking about that in somatica because I related to pretty much everything both the anxious preoccupied style and the um avoidant dismissive tendencies Mm -hmm. and I was just kind of going back and forth I think I'm this I think I'm that no I think I'm I definitely have anxiety but also I can like totally shut down disorganized attachment finally (laughs) finally accepted that because I before I had a much um I always thought it had to be like extreme cases of like childhood abuse or neglect which I couldn't Mm -hmm. relate to yeah and so I've realized more now that I don't have to like totally fit into like this one extreme case it's more of a spectrum that's given me a lot of validation mm-hmm. as well as like experiences in adulthood that I've yeah. gone through. not the extreme uh childhood abuse and neglect just the subtle childhood abuse and neglect <laughs> just the subtle <laughs> yeah 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 mm-hmm. It's, it's actually, you know, a big challenge for a lot of people to say like, oh, it wasn't that bad, right? Uh, and I think it's a right. tool of abusers often to sort of frame it that way is to say, well, I never hit you. Like, no, but you belittled me my entire childhood. Like, you yeah, know, no, but you didn't true. see me. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, it was um, like childhood experiences over time, but also um, a really um, unhealthy relationship that I was in. And all of that had such an impact on me. That that relationship had a, an enormous impact um, on me. And so, mm-hmm. yeah, reading reading through Polysecure, I finally was like, oh, of course, <laughs> like, of course that's where it comes from. Like the like foot on the gas and the brake um, at the same time, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I'm well, in kind of sifting through that, I know I mentioned my avoidant tendencies that come up and get like really aggressive. That's something I mm-hmm. wanted to talk a little bit about today. Yeah. Well, and I want to give you permission too to not like not fit into one particular box, right? Mm-hmm. I think that maybe part of the confusion is that, you know, that avoidant attachment style doesn't maybe describe you perfectly and that there are some anxious ambivalent components or some securely attached components that also describe you, right? Yeah, so important to realize like, okay, I'm not just like, I don't have to fit myself into one box, always dependent on who I'm in connection with and yeah, just the like ebb and flow of energy in, in one relationship. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And and I think, you know, these labels are helpful for like describing certain phenomena, but you're not limited to the label, right? Like, mm-hmm. like maybe you identify as um, like avoidant, but it doesn't mean that that's all that Caroline is. And it also doesn't mean that like, that's where you have to be forever too. Right. I mean, we're all on these journeys of healing and Mm -hmm. healing means more secure attachment. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely. 
definitely not my goal to <laughs> stay in my <laughs> fearful avoidant tendencies. And yeah. I have I have built a lot of um more secure attachments. But yeah, these tendencies definitely still pop up from time to time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And we can still have like aspects of our relationship that are securely attached or like certain relationships that somehow miraculously seem like totally secure, right? And those could be learning Mm -hmm. opportunities and anchor points, right? Mm -hmm. Like personally, I'm that anxious, ambivalent attachment style. Like I'm a father. I'm not anxiously, ambivalently attached to my child. I am very securely attached to my child, right? There's no... There's no anxiety there. I was actually really struck by how little anxiety there was. Like it was, I think about it like a job sometimes. And it's the only job I never felt like I was faking, right? I'm the best person to be this little guy's dad, period. No conversation. There isn't even a contest. If there was a contest, nobody else would show up. The benefits are terrible. (laughs) (laughs) Um Uh, yeah, so okay, so to and let's let's look at this list. So you gave me a list of things and I wanna sort of summarize and maybe you can explain, you know, how do that how does that come up for you, right? So Mm -hmm. um number one was avoidant in terms of conf in times of conflict. Mm -hmm. Um number two was holding other people's boundaries at the expense of your own. And number three was practicing empathy uh, when partners feel threatened by, you know, your explorations of Mm non-monogamy. So the second one, um, I wouldn't word it as at my expense, but um, so I'm bisexual. So when I, and I'm attracted to very femme presenting women, typically, um, and this is always like joked about <laughs> like how like two femmes try to interact is just like <laughs> nothing happens because like both of us are used to um, the other person initiating and uh, so I find it I tend to like be so concerned about the other person's boundaries that they even like haven't communicated to me I just am assuming and so afraid of making them uncomfortable that I tend to like really like sit back and like second guess everything um when they don't actually need that (laughs) and they're not like wanting me to like be so far away but yeah Yeah. well I would I would push back and say that is at your expense because you don't get to touch them or kiss them or whatever right yeah so at the expense of your wants and needs, you're holding up these boundaries for someone else that they may not need. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, and that, True. it feels to me like people-pleasing. Mm-hmm. Even if you're not, even if you're not like actually pleasing the other person, I think it comes from a place of, let me do extra to make sure they're okay, even if it means I'm not okay. I'm, you know, I have like this, especially like with people that have shared the um, painful experiences in their past where people cross their boundaries. And I'm so afraid of being that. Like, I am like hyper focused on not being predatory. Mm-hmm. It's way, way too much, though. Yeah. yeah, I hear you. But with hyper focus, there's a, a cost, right? It's not free. It's a lot of your attention is going into something. And so you're missing out on attention to other things. So perhaps you're on this, this date with this femme presenting person and they're like, boy, I wish they would touch me. And you're so, you're so focused on like on the red flags. You don't see the green flags. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, 
And then I would just discount the green flags too. <laughs> sure, sure. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, there's ways around this, right? Because there's people who have zero perception of subtlety and they still exist and they still get married and they still do things, right? Um, and so we can do that. We can be like, you don't have like no perception of subtlety, but you've got like a blind spot when it comes to subtlety, right? Because you're so concerned with making sure you don't violate somebody's boundaries that you're not, you're not even seeing the invitations, right? Right. So um, you can just say that. You say, hey, I am not going to pick up your subtle cues. So if you want me to touch you, you can let me know. Yeah. Right. And not everybody can do that. Not everybody can, can, ha- can be that I'm honest. Like, I've been told, oh, I won't do that. <laughs> like... Yeah. So you've already tried that. And somebody said that that's just not going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah. What about if you sort of flip it on its, other, on its side, because you've got this sort of gender symmetrical situation, right? So you can say, hey, I want you to touch me. Yeah. I ask a lot of um, vulnerability from other people, but but sometimes I really struggle um, being vulnerable myself. It's like a great, great way to hide for me is like always asking questions. How are you feeling? Like what's going on for you? And I'm like, I could also share how I'm feeling. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, you can. And that, I mean, that's a good practice is like when you see yourself checking in on the other person, check in on mm-hmm. yourself and share, mm-hmm. right? So that's your indicator because it sounds like you're not going to have the impulse to say, this is how I'm feeling. This is what I want, right? But when you catch yourself mm-hmm. saying, how do you feel? How, what do you want? Share the same. And I would challenge you to when you have that impulse, share first. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so let's do <laughs> let's do some role play. Let's try it out. You know, okay. let's practice it. So um, I'm going to make a proposition and um, I'm going to do it vulnerably, right? I'm going to be really vulnerable about how I share it before I'm asking the person to be vulnerable, mm-hmm. right? I'm going to say it in, an, in like an invitation. And then we're going to switch roles and then you're going to do the same. So I'm going to model being vulnerable before asking somebody else to be vulnerable. And I want you to know that we're role-playing and you're not in any danger of me holding you to this. Okay. You don't have to worry about (laughs) the consequences. Okay. Um, And in fact, I, I could say we could practice rejection but I feel like that's, it's too much to do all at once. So let's do that separately, right? Because because dealing with rejection okay. is a skill. And if we can get really good at that, then it's going to be less scary to be vulnerable because we know, like, if we're going to do gymnastics, we ought to know how to fall, right? Isn't that like one of the first things we learn when we do gymnastics? Because if we're going to do weird stuff and spin in the air and stuff, <laughs> sometimes we're going to fall, right? And we need to be good at falling and we're going to be able to yeah. take bigger risks when we know that we're going to be able to handle the, the outcome not being perfect, right? So, um, okay, so uh, here we go. Well, you know, Caroline, it's always such a pleasure to speak with you. And, you know, I love that you've got you know, that you're interested in exploring this submissive energy of yours and you're polyamorous and you're interested in kink. Those all seem to really line up with the things that I'm interested in, right? I'm dominant, I'm polyamorous, I'm interested in kink. You know, I'd love it if we could get to know each other better. If, you know, if you wanted to come explore, you know, a dungeon space during a party, uh, then you could come out to LA anytime. And I'm here and any Friday, Saturday night, uh, give me enough notice and let's make it happen. What do you think about that? 
I feel honored that you know getting that invitation. I think that could be really interesting and um, fun potentially. Awesome. Thinking about how I next have to be vulnerable. I'm scary. <laughs> it's okay. It, it, well, just be here. Just be here. Let me do it. Let me be like more. Um. Let me be like more obvious because I think that one was like maybe like too subtle, right? So let me be more obvious. Be like, um, you know, Caroline, you seem really sweet, and I love your smile and. You, you look like you just have these really soft lips. I love, you know, kissing. I find it to be a great way to be intimate. How do you feel about kissing? Mm. I feel that it takes me a while to feel comfortable with someone um, in order to cross that line. So I'm not ready for that right now. Sure. Thank you for holding that boundary with me. <laughs> Okay, and now I'm going to change the subject. <laughs> Say yes, thank you. <laughs> Accept the no. Um, no, but what did I do, right? I said, like, this is what I'm feeling, and this is how I like. How do you like, yeah. right? Yeah. And I gave you an out, right? So you didn't even have to say no to me, right? You could say, like, in general, I don't really like kissing, right? Mm. So you're not saying, like, I didn't say like, Hey, kiss me. I said, this is what I like. What do you like? Mm -hmm. Right. And get a sense of that. <laughs> okay. It's just, yeah. Something I always observe about myself. I find it so much easier to be um, like in the role of like holding the container and being the practitioner. Mm -hmm. And then I get so like self-conscious. <laughs> it's my turn. It's okay. Yeah. Well, and maybe we can use that. Which is, which is why I got into this work, obviously. Like, obviously, it wasn't because I was just an expert at everything. <laughs> got into it because it's hard for me. Well, and may maybe we yeah. can use that, right? Maybe, maybe you reframe the experience of being vulnerable and asking for vulnerability to mm -hmm. like holding a container for that person. Right. Yeah. So the first thing we're doing is demonstrating vulnerability. Right. Mm -hmm. I say, I like this. Do you like this? Yeah. Right. And you're going to get better results too, because you're showing that you're vulnerable and it's safe to be vulnerable. Right. Yeah that you trust that person with your vulnerability and they're more likely to trust you with theirs. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. So let me, let me like contrast it. Right. Um, the contrast would be like, how do you feel about kissing? Right. You don't know where I stand. Mm -hmm. You can make some assumptions, but I haven't been vulnerable. I haven't shared how I feel. I haven't shared my stance on that mm -hmm. topic. And I'm just asking you yours. It's very masculine of you. <laughs> <laughs> it's safer, right? Yeah. But you, but if you're yeah. asking them to be vulnerable, playing it safe is the last thing that you want to do. You want to be vulnerable. Mm -hmm. I do. Do you want to try it? Do you want to? Do you want to try practicing? Sure. Okay. Maybe it'll be easier if you think of something that's just totally absurd. Like, do I want to eat, you know, five gallons of peanut butter? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Hey, Ezra. I really enjoy eating peanut butter in really large quantities. And I think that could be a really um bonding experience for us um yeah what do you think about that i'm allergic <laughs> i'm not but okay. i just thought that was funny <laughs> <Be honest with me. laughs> i'm not, I'm not allergic. i'll never ask you that again <laughs>
Yeah. Shut down, shut down, avoid, run away. Right? <laughs> um, no, I mean, I thought that was good. You know, you start with your own, with your own experience. Right. And you could even dwell in, in your passion. Right. Like I might've said like, Caroline, like, oh my God, I don't know if you know about sloshing, but it's basically like just being messy. It's like a fetish and peanut butter is just the fucking best. It's like so sticky and it gets everywhere and it's so thick and like nasty. How do you feel about peanut butter? <laughs> wow. Thank you so much for sharing your experience with me. Um, I find that really fascinating to learn more about you. Personally, I enjoy peanut butter, but I'm really averse to messiness. Um, that makes me feel a little bit anxious about I understand. But I'm so glad that you feel comfortable sharing that with me, and I'd like to hear more. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I'm happy. Always happy to talk about sloshing. <laughs> um, I am actually always... <laughs> always available to talk about sloshing <laughs> yeah i'm very curious yeah no there was a soup cannon at one point i just yeah it's bizarre um messiness i feel like is a component of sex just inevitably and and so uh -huh. like it's very easy to like sexualize messiness and mm -hmm. there's so much shame given to us in childhood about like don't make a mess don't make a mess and like, I'm a fucking adult. If I want to get 20 cans of soup and fill up a kiddie pool, that's my business. <laughs> uh, I love that so much. I could right. totally do that with Jello. There you go. There okay. Go. So here we found it. We found a thing. Jello <laughs> isn't messy mine. enough, right? And so you could even get um, sugar free Jello <laughs> and it won't be sticky. <laughs> wow yeah <laughs> yeah that's it sugar-free <laughs> sugar-free uh jello diet coke both don't get sticky so yeah. yeah and then i always do it outside <laughs> because i don't want to deal jello. with the mess inside and so there's just like mm -hmm. a couple months of like random carrot chunks in the backyard <laughs> um okay so <laughs> moving, <derailed> on. <laughs> moving on because this is not a podcast about my kinks would you like private intimacy coaching perhaps you'd like to be a guest on our show Either way, book your free 30-minute intro call with Ezra at askezra.info. Yeah, so we talked about sort of holding our own vulnerability up as like a peace offering almost for someone else, yeah. right? And propositions are tough, right? I think like this is useful in a proposition because it's, it's vulnerable to say, hey, I want to do this thing. Do you want to do this thing, right? right. But but I think it goes beyond an actual proposition because it just can be, hey, I, you know, um, another example is when I'm dating somebody, uh, inevitably, a question I ask is, how do you feel about sex? Right? Mm -hmm. I mean, some people will go, I fucking love it. Other people will be like, it's okay. Other people will be like, it's good. I like it. But like, there's reservation. And so what are the reservations, right? And for some people, it's really intense and personal and other people like it's not, you know, and so I'll say the same thing. I'll say, Hey, I, yeah. you know, I really like sex. Sometimes it's casual for me. Sometimes it's serious. I like it way more when it's serious, but like, how do you feel about it? Mm. You know? Yeah. And it's not a proposition. That's not a, hey, right. do you want to have sex with me? That's how do you feel about this topic? Mm -hmm. That's great. It's so simple. And, yeah. Yeah. That's perfect. Sometimes people okay. can take it as a proposition. Like, like when I, when we were having a conversation, I talked about kissing. You said, no, I don't want to kiss you. I was like, that's fine. That's, 
not what I asked you, but okay. <laughs> Good information. Saying, how do you how do you feel about kissing, right? Is that yeah, how do you feel about about kissing in general is, is what I meant to ask. Okay. Yeah, because it's a little less oh, okay. scary. It's a little less I'm not I'm not asking you to do something right now. I just kind of want to know how you feel about it. Like if you were yeah. to say that to me, I'd say, you know, I think it's really I guess great. No one's ever asked me that before. So. Yeah. Well, I, I would say, oh, I think it's really great. I think it could be really hot. It can be really sexy. I, but to me, it's like really intimate. And so like, mm. I, there are people who like, I'll have sex with, but I won't kiss because we're not that intimate. Mm. Like to me, like sure. mouths together are more, more intimate than genitals together. And I, I appreciate You're that that's not intimate. everybody's stance. Right. Yeah. But that's mine. Right. That's mine. Yeah. And kissing just like, like sex like everyone has their own style and preference and some people just aren't compatible kissers like period it's true it's, it's true so individual yeah yeah i've got a partner that just wants to give me like a little peck now and again and like <laughs> yeah. that's not how i like it but you know what we got other stuff and that's fine <laughs> right right but if i go in like all i want is deep kissing and they're just giving me this little pack. I'm going to be disappointed. Yeah. But it's about setting clear expectations and, and um, you know, having those conversations. Mm. Mm. Maybe I could try to say um, what you just did. How do you feel about sex? That might be helpful. So I'm like, in my mind, you're going to be a woman. No. <laughs> I find women to be really beautiful and I love sharing physical with you with women, including sex. How do you feel about sex with women? Uh, I think it's amazing. I really enjoy it. <laughs> it's my preference. Hmm. Strong preference. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Um, Thank you. A good job. <laughs> you did. Yeah, you did a great job. You, you you shared vulnerably. Like, so what's really tough with the sharing vulnerably is like, how do you, where do you draw the line between sharing vulnerably and like making explanations? Mm -hmm. Right. Because explanations don't help. Right. Um, so to, to do like a worse job than you did, I thought you did a good job, but, but just to kind of explain the difference would be like, I think women's bodies are wonderful and, you know, they just, they smell better. They are better kept. They are, you know, they are nicer people, right? Those are all like <laughs> explanations. Nobody asked me for an explanation, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Right. Like I'm almost excusing my preference. Right. Instead of just owning it. Like, I just love it. Yeah, you know, no, and I just nothing. love it. Just yeah, just just love it. Who cares why you love it? Who cares? Like, you're not. Yeah, you're not like trying to excuse yourself, right? Right. Yeah. And honestly, an explanation for a preference is like after the fact, and half the time they're they're wrong. <laughs> like, you know. <laughs> Half the time you're just you're just trying to explain as something that you feel, and who cares how, why you feel it? You feel it. That's what's just important. Feel it. Yeah, you feel yeah. it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I think. Um, yeah, that's a great place to start. Is just talking about your feelings in general, and then learning about the other persons rather than I want to do this with you. Yeah. Yeah. It's mm -hmm. less, it's lower stakes is <laughs> lower stakes. Right. Yeah. So I want to take, I want to take this skill that we just developed. Right. And I want to like meta apply it because mm -hmm. you know, what's the challenge? The challenge is like assuming someone's boundaries instead of finding them out. Right. Right. Okay. So let's say we are on a date and I'm anxious about, there's this like touch barrier that happens where you're like, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to touch this person. Right. Mm -hmm. And you're supposed to like interpret it. Like, yeah. like normal mating rituals suggest that I'm supposed to psychically fucking know how much you like yeah. touching and to do it. 
right? And if I get it wrong, it's so insane to me, like watching yeah. movies now and thinking about like, you're still the expectation that you're supposed to know, like, it's so crazy. dumb. <laughs> so dumb. Can we just be done with it? Can we declare that dead now? Yeah. Oh my God. People are so anxious for. Mm -hmm. no okay. Well, but so <laughs> the reason people don't, the reason people do that is because they don't have an alternative. So we're going to give you give you an alternative we're going to give listeners yeah. an alternative right now right and that's to have a conversation about it right mm -hmm. so um if i'm anxious about it i'm going to clear the air as soon as possible right so let's say we're going to a museum um and i might even in make an invitation to be like you know to give you like permission for like conditional too like not you don't have to feel a certain way all the time like i'll be like um like, hey, Caroline, I'm really excited to go to this museum. And, you know, to be honest, I'm a very touchy person. And, you know, I'd love to be able to, you know, hold your hand or, you know, put my arm around you while we're, um, while we're on this date. Is that something that you're open to? Um, or how do you generally feel about, you know, physical affection? Hmm. Generally, I really do enjoy physical affection. Um... And I am a very affectionate person with people that I'm close to. Um, since this is a first date, I think that I'd like to be the one to initiate that. Um, but you can trust me to initiate when I'm ready for that. I do trust you. And thank you for holding that boundary for me. Mm -hmm. Are you excited about this art museum or what? So excited. Awesome. <laughs> Yeah. So, okay. And I modeled, I'm getting ahead of myself because, because that was almost like a rejection, right? Mm -hmm. As if um, I wasn't, I didn't say, Hey, like, I want to hold your hand right now. Right. Yeah. But what I heard was like, I'm not ready for that now, probably, but maybe. Right. And yeah. to me, it lands like a rejection. And so what I'm going to okay. do is handle it like a rejection. Right. And I'm going to say, mm -hmm. thank you for holding that boundary thank you for letting me know i want you to feel comfortable and i'm going to change the fucking subject okay right okay. because the worst thing is when somebody says no and then the other person goes <laughs> <Yeah>. explain yourself <laughs> right that's terrible you don't owe anybody an explanation for your no and um and that you should reassure that person that they are that that you appreciate that they have held a boundary because that's an investment in the relationship in the long term right mm -hmm. to, to ignore your own boundary is to assume that the relationship is not going to last and that it is easier to just ignore it than it is to deal with it right yeah, so um so i thought that was good um do you want to do the same thing i could be the woman that we're on a date you're on a date with Okay. And to make it to make it like more real, like you want to touch this person. You do, you're like, I want to hold your hand right now. If you say it's cool, it's gonna happen. Okay. <laughs> so make it more like this is an in the moment thing. Yeah, I I don't want you to feel like you don't have anything to gain. Right. You've yeah. got what you've got to gain is is physicality. You know, maybe let's say that's a second or third date. Or something where you're feeling yeah. like more more interested in that physicality yeah and maybe okay. it's not hand holding maybe it's maybe it's you want to cuddle after the date i don't know what whatever is realistic mm -hmm. for you okay um i really enjoy being close to you and i'm naturally quite an affectionate person with the people that i care about i really love to just hold you how do you feel about that? I'm super down. Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> That's great. That was great. You know, um, and I want to commend you too on you started that with owning your feelings. Right? You said, Hey, here's my feelings. What are yours? Yeah. Right. And there's a benefit. So, like, let's say that person says no, right? you still have the benefit of letting them know how you feel. 
right? That's information they didn't have before. And it's information you want them to have. Mm -hmm. Right. If this is a person that's safe, mm -hmm. that you, that you trust with your feelings, then you want them to have that. And then they might think about it and, and, and say, oh, you know, this is, you know, okay, no, I don't want to cuddle, but I will hold your hand. I do like that. Or like, yeah, I'll give you, to remember. yeah, because yeah, they know what you need now. They didn't know what you yeah. needed before. Right. right. Definitely. Like, okay, let's so, like, let's okay. say, let's say I'm asexual, right. And we're on a date. I'm not a romantic. I want a romantic relationship, but like, I go to kiss you and you're thinking, I don't want sex. <laughs> and I was like, I never want sex. Right. <laughs> Cause you're thinking it's yeah. a package deal that kissing leads to sex. And that's, it's not what I'm trying to do. Right. But if I can mm -hmm. say, Hey, you know, I'm not interested in, in going further, but if you're open to it, I'd really love to, to be, you know, to, to smooch it up. Right. <laughs> right. So I'm, I mean, by being vulnerable, I actually have more power in the situation because they know what I need. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> those little, yeah, those little reframes are super, super helpful. Um, because it's like when my avoidance tendencies pop up, it's like I have everything to lose by sharing myself. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like build that wall back up. No. Yeah. Well, it's you a power. It's, it's a power move. <laughs> Right. Yeah. If you don't have needs, then they don't have anything on you. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then, so I know we didn't really talk much about directly addressing the avoidant um, attachment style, but I did find, so Wired for Love by Stan Tatkin mm -hmm. on page 85 has like direct antecedents to what your fear or discomfort is and like how that person can address that. Right. So, um, just to be, you know, um, so islands like fear of being, uh, feeling interrupt intruded upon. Right. So how can the person deal with your feeling intruded upon? And these seem like messages for the partner and they absolutely are, but if you can be an expert in your own attachment style, then you can offer these solutions to your partner. Right. So is that something that happens to you? You feel like intruded upon by your partner? Yeah, I think so sometimes. Sure. Yeah, I'm very, I'm very afraid of losing independence. And um, yeah, the idea of like my identity being someone's partner, like, oh, this is Caroline. Like mm, partner. Yeah, yeah, that's challenging. Kind of yeah, having people assume that like just because I'm in a relationship with someone, like we share everything and that um, that really that really sets me off. <laughs> sure. It's not it's not right on the nose in terms of what they're explaining here. The um, vulnerabilities as they describe them are feeling intruded upon feeling trapped or out of control, feeling mm -hmm. too much intimacy and feeling uh, fear of being blamed, right? Which one of those resonates like the most strongly with you? The feeling trapped. Feeling trapped. So um, the, the, mm -hmm. they, they get basically giving the partner quotes to use, right? So here are some quotes that the partner can use to address you in a way that's going to like be considerate of that fear. Right. So, um, I need a few minutes of your time and then you can get back to what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're not, it's not, Hey, there's this endless conversation I'm about to start. Right? <laughs> um, I can see you've had enough run along and we'll continue later. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> yeah, great. Use it. I'm Use it. Now. <laughs> yeah. Um, That's super cute to me. <laughs> Maybe some people would think that. <laughs> I love that. This one's funny. This one says, you have a couple choices here. And then doesn't 
doesn't finish the sentence. But that one's that one feels ultimate to me to me a little bit. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think the tone that you read it in sounds very ultimate. You got a couple choices here, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Put on my man voice. <laughs> yeah well i know you've got this book because it was course material so check it out page 85 84 and 85 depending on island or or wave depending on anxious ambivalent or um avoidant um and i highlighted this whole page just just highlighted the whole thing (laughs) So, yeah, it's all important for sure. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, another, another tool I want to give you that you're going to hate, but it's going to (laughs) work. Love it. (laughs) You're going to hate it, um, is to undermine your own strategies. You can identify Mm -hmm. a negative strategy or let's say a less than helpful pattern of behavior, right? I want to say it's negative because it protected you before when people around you weren't safe, right? Mm -hmm. But we're with somebody who we feel is safe and we're having this conversation with a partner who we trust and we love. And so that's not appropriate behavior anymore, right? So what we can do is say, hey, sometimes I do this and I want you to know that it's because I'm feeling insecure and I don't want to do that anymore. right? Now it's not going to be a surprise to your partner when you do it. It's not going to work as well. And if it doesn't work, you stop doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Luckily I have a very, very understanding partner and um, this came up, um, came up very sharply like a few months ago. I got, I got upset over something and, you know, totally shut down, went cold. And, you know, later I came back and I was like, so sorry, sorry about that thing I do where I pretend that we never really had a relationship and I don't even really know you (laughs) whenever I get upset. He's like, yeah, yeah, I don't love that. It's kind of scary, (laughs) but it's so obvious now when that comes up um, that, we can see it right away and we can laugh about it now it still does come up um but yeah now now we have a better understanding of each other to address it um yeah with with patience but yeah and by owning it by like saying hey this is a thing that i do it really takes the it takes the gas out of the tank Mm -hmm. and you know we do these things because they're effective, yeah. right? And when we reveal the magic trick, it's not as effective. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a really good way to put it. <laughs> well, and um, yeah, yeah it, and it's, a, it's a power over situation. Like I deal a lot with power exchange and, and power play. And I know in previous conversations we've had these conversations about um, like dominance and submission and and things like that. Um, And to be withholding is like, is almost like to have the the relationship hostage. Like if you don't meet my demands, then we're just going to not have have a relationship. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's not, that's not a power with situation. It's not empowering for both partners. It is empowering for you. It will give you power in that situation at the expense of the power of your partner. It will not give me fulfillment. <laughs> well, not unless you want to, not unless you have a partner who wants to be abused is what it comes down to. Mm-hmm. If you have a partner who is like, mm-hmm. my mom was an asshole. I want you to be an asshole. Mm-hmm. Then, you know, then that's something you can act out in full force. And I think that's mm-hmm. the thing that that's really attractive to a lot of people about BDSM is that we can negotiate those things, right? Like you can have a scene, you can have like a play scene where you're like, Hey, I'm going to, I'm going to treat you like total garbage. I'm going to treat you like we don't have a relationship. 
right? You can even like make a fake mm-hmm. fight and then do, yeah. and then act it out as bad as yeah. you want. And then, and then like fuck after and laugh about it and, and yeah. unpack it in a way that is, that is ethical, right? I can like totally see how that would be really, really helpful to some people, but that's so not what I yeah. want. No, no. I mean, um, it's not, it's not that, for everyone. Is, yeah. It is great to, yeah. Yeah. You might even honestly, like what might be like therapeutic or sexy. I, I definitely see the benefits of that. In a lot of mm-hmm. Yeah. Another, another way to have it be like sexy or therapeutic is to like do a role reversal and to say like, here are all the things that I do. You take them and you do them, <laughs> but you can safe word, right? That's, that's the yeah. difference is that it's repetition with agency. Yeah. I love being ignored. I love it. <laughs> well, there you go. You already are yeah. doing it. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Not yeah. my kink. No. <laughs> Not my kink. I can't relate. I had, I had one partner I who it. I just... <laughs> I just like played video games to ignore them uh-huh. and they would find it really attractive and then be like, Oh great. Now you're hot. Like, let's go have fun. And like, and they were like, no, no, keep <laughs> ignoring me. I was like, where does this, where does, where does this pay out? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's totally a thing for me. I, um, I find it, it's really exciting to be ignored and kind of treated with indifference. And then I have to kind of like earn their attention. I really love that. So, yeah. <laughs> he richly takes notes. <laughs> I took notes so aggressively. I dropped my pen. Um, yeah, no. And that's something you can play out, you know? Um, and I don't know your partner, but I would imagine that if you can take this experience that might have been painful for them and to say, Hey, let's sexualize it. Let's like, Mm -hmm. you could even like reenact the fight. I don't, maybe, maybe you can, maybe you can't. If it's like too sore of a, of a (laughs) too recent of a wound, (laughs) you know, or not, maybe it's like, Hey, like, you know, where that fight we had about the dishes, like let's switch roles you be yeah. me, you be mad at me, you start ignoring me, and then I'm gonna, you know, I'll be you. <laughs> but you have to watch out. You can't mock them. You can't, like, yeah. You can't be like, oh, I'm upset about the dishes. <laughs> or, I mean, unless that's how you want to do that. Um, yeah, unless they're into that. <laughs> <laughs> Negotiate yeah. that first for sure degradation and humiliation are not things that you should just jump into and see how it feels. Absolutely not. (laughs) Yeah. So it sounds like you're already doing that though. um, Super interesting. Yeah. Yeah. I have, um, I have a decent amount of awareness, um, around which is very empowering. Um, but yeah, you definitely, definitely given me some new tools and reframes. Um, so I'll definitely be applying. Yeah, I appreciate that. Awesome. It's yeah. Like, so uh, uh, <laughs> ask my partner, okay, now you be me. So I want to fuck you. <laughs> get the strap. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, and another thing that's like in the same vein of like disempowering bad, your own bad behavior is to like, um, is to like develop specific trigger words, right? Like specific, like you can have a conversation and, um, and then sort of anchor that conversation in specific language, right? Cause maybe in the middle of a fight, like you're not as, as aware as you are right now. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. And, um, maybe so, okay. For example, let's say that, um, things get really heated in an argument and that's when you start to withdraw. Right. Mm -hmm. And you can, you can refer to like a refractory time. Like if, if you're like starting to feel like overwhelmed that you want to withdraw, but like, 
if you're like, let's talk about this six hours later, like that's your cool down time. That's your refractory period. Right. And so you can be like, um, I need some cool down. Right. Mm -hmm. And it refers specifically to these feelings that we've had this elaborate conversation about. And so you don't have to have this elaborate conversation again in the middle of a fight. Mm -hmm. Right. So if you feel that you're withdrawing, if you feel like, like, I'm going to shut down and I'm going to start giving the silent treatment. Be like, you know what? I need, I need some cool down time. Right. Yeah. Or you can, you, you know, you share that with your partner and your partner can be like, Hey, like, I know that this is important and we do need to talk about this, but it seems like maybe you need some cool down time. Mm. Right. And that's, that's like, that's a kindness. It, the way <laughs> I say it, except for some reason, it sounds yeah. terrible, but, but no, it's like, do you need this? You know, do you need, <laughs> do you need time? Do you want to come back to this? Yeah. You know, but you find like language that's yeah. going to like key in and be like, Oh shit, this is what we talked about. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. Do we need to chill? Can we chill? Chill <laughs> means chill means stop fucking talking for an hour so you can process. <laughs> right. Yeah. I have that. I have that. Cause I'm like an instant <laughs> Honestly, processor. I think I have that. I'm an instant mm. processor. So I just immediately I want to not. talk about stuff. No, I can do that. I'll be so mean. <laughs> I'll be so mean. <laughs> I need time to process alone. And, I get it. Yeah. I get it. Yeah. yeah. Lower my activated state. And that's valuable. You know, that's valuable. Yeah. That's it's valuable and it's legitimate. You know, those are your feelings and those are, that's how you need to operate. And mm -hmm. it only feels wrong when it's a surprise. It only feels wrong when you don't honor it. Right. But if you say, Hey, this is what I need. And this is what I'm going to need. Then it's perfect. It's you're just exactly how you need to be in the world. Mm -hmm. Right. I love that. I love that you got that, you know, um, sexualized repetition with agency. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, that was a great light bulb moment for me. <laughs> Realizing that. Was that today or you figured that out earlier? That was a while ago because um, I always had this generic idea of like the kind of dominant energy that I was attracted to um and finally you know just looking at my different desires and tracing the origins and it's like oh, okay it's this very specific thing I love being treated with like total indifference <laughs> like it doesn't matter to my partner whether something happens or not um like I love being treated like as just totally just unimportant. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, yeah, because like the turn on for me is trying to kind of earn that affection from them um, and like seduce them and convince them. Um, yeah. Rather like than choosing people that are unavailable. <laughs> and ignore me because they don't care they're not ready to mm. be in a relationship yeah well see that's that's the difference between repetition and repetition with agency so if you go after people who are not emotionally available you'll get that need met but you've got your your um you're vulnerable yeah right you're um you're not in a safe place if you do that not at all so that was that was huge to realize oh that's me acting out my childhood experience and trying to create a different outcome mm -hmm. let's do that in the bedroom now <laughs> with someone who actually loves me yeah and who's going to care for you after better. yeah, yeah. well yeah. and i think that can be a really hot tool because i know you're exploring non-monogamy that can be a really hot tool for compersion right yeah. So you can fuel, <laughs> you can fuel your enjoyment of your partner's enjoyment of other people with sort of inserting yourself being ignored 
you know, this is how mm-hmm. they're ignoring you is by being with this other person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it sounds hot. Mm-hmm. You, be, you know what actually you might really like is fornophilia. I don't know if you've ever played with objectification. You basically, you'd be Anymore. like, <laughs> you'd be the lamp or the table or the the ottoman you become the furniture oh i'll have to look into that that's not something i've ever thought about Mm -hmm. yeah it's a furniture play it's uh (laughs) you can get a lampshade hat you can hold hold a drink up i think that would be really fun honestly if i were just like the coffee table and then my partner can rest their feet on me yeah now okay now let's so let's take let's take it a step further right so let's imagine you're the you're the coffee table right they put their drink on you they put their feet on you and then they have a date come in and then the both of them just ignore you like they would a coffee table (laughs) Mm. yeah that may may have some potential ding 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 <laughs> we found a new <laughs> fetish <laughs> uh, i don't know that's a that's an interesting one that's that's new to me but yeah we'll see <laughs> something to think about yeah let me just you know something to think about yeah. while you're while you're at it <laughs> well fantastic thanks for coming caroline thank you for having me this is really fun yes we'll have you back Thanks for watching the Ask Ezra Intimacy Coaching Podcast. Support our show at patreon.com slash askezra. Join us at the personal growth tier and receive a special thank you on the next podcast episode.